If you've ever tried to make Chinese takeout egg rolls at home and been disappointed in the result, this video is for you. Today we'll go over everything you need to know about making extra crispy, super crunchy, old school style egg rolls at home. I'll reveal the secret seasoning used by the best takeout restaurants, and we'll do it all with standard kitchen equipment. Now, the first thing we'll need to address is the style of wrapper used for egg rolls. Traditional American Chinese takeout egg rolls are made with a wheat pastry skin that often includes egg, hence the name egg rolls. You'll often find them labeled as egg roll wrappers or egg roll skins, and you can generally find them in the refrigerated section or the freezer aisle of most grocery stores. What you want to avoid getting are spring roll wrappers. These are a completely different style of pastry sheet that won't get us that blistered, bubbly, chewy exterior we're looking for. If you've ever had the fried rolls with a smooth skin at a more traditional Chinese restaurant, they were using spring roll wrappers. For the egg roll skins, there are a couple of brands that work really well. So if you can find Golden Dragon, these are good, and I'm not even going to try to pronounce this name. Twin Dragon also makes a decent skin. I'm not really sure what's going on with mythological reptiles and good egg rolls, but in all honesty, most of the commercially available wrappers are basically the same, so just grab whatever is most convenient. For vegetables, the most common base is cabbage, celery, and carrot. This is the mirepoix of takeout egg rolls. With this vegetable base, you can improvise with ingredients and basically customize egg rolls to your heart's desire. I've seen all sorts of cabbages being used, but the most common is your standard green or white cabbage, the cheap kind you can find in any grocery store. For celery, I've seen both regular and Chinese celery being used in takeout kitchens. Either will work fine, but if you can track down the Chinese version, I would highly recommend using it because it has a much more pronounced celery flavor that works really well on this dish. The traditional method of preparation for the vegetables is to blanch them in simmering water for about a minute, shock them in cold water, then remove all of the moisture by pressing them, and finally roll them in the egg roll. So to get started, let's fill our largest pot with lightly salted water and bring it up to a simmer. Adding a bit of salt will help the vegetables maintain their color and improve the seasoning. Then let's add 8 cups of finely shredded cabbage, 1 cup of julienne celery, and 1 cup of julienne carrot. Simmer for about a minute or just until the vegetables have slightly softened, and at this point you can remove them to a bowl of ice water like this, or you can do as they do in restaurants and drain them into a colander and run some cold water over them. Either way, after they've cooled down, we'll need to get as much of the moisture as possible out of the vegetables. This is an absolutely crucial step. This is the number one reason why a lot of home cooks have problems making proper egg rolls, and this is why they keep turning out soggy. Getting the moisture out of the vegetables can be accomplished in a number of ways. You can leave them in the colander and press down on them, which works okay but takes a while to do properly. You can put them in a towel and twist them, which works a bit better but takes a lot of horsepower. Or if you have a potato ricer, the thing that looks like a garlic press for giants, this is the best method. You'll just stick a handful of the blanched vegetables in the ricer and clamp down as hard as you can, and make sure to pour out the water that collects on top of the barrel. In terms of actual effort expended, this is by far the best way to remove excess water from the vegetables. Then I like to spread them out on a baking sheet and let them sit for about an hour so even more moisture can evaporate. And the vegetables can be made up to a few days beforehand. You'll just stick them in the fridge until you're ready to wrap the egg rolls. For the protein, you can add whatever you want, but what I've come across most often is ground pork. I've also seen Chinese barbecue pork, char siu, quite often, and I wanted to try to combine the flavors of both but without the laborious preparation of char siu. So to a bowl, let's add a quarter teaspoon of sugar, a quarter teaspoon of kosher salt, an eighth of a teaspoon of Chinese five spice, an eighth of a teaspoon of white pepper, one tablespoon of Shaoxing wine, three quarter teaspoon of light soy sauce, half a teaspoon of hoisin sauce. And this is kind of like a sweet Chinese barbecue sauce. You can find it at any grocery store and it lasts forever. You can basically pass it down to your great grandchildren as a family heirloom if you keep it in the fridge. And half a teaspoon of oyster sauce. Then give the pork sauce a good whisk to ensure it's thoroughly mixed and set it aside. Now let's heat a bit of oil in a nonstick pan over medium high heat. Then toss in a quarter pound of ground pork. And you want to break it up as much as you can at the beginning, but then leave it alone for several minutes. You want to take this pork as far as possible without burning it. The little charred bits will provide bursts of flavor in our egg rolls. About two to three minutes before the pork is done, let's toss in one teaspoon of minced garlic and cook it until it's fragrant, about 20 to 30 seconds. Then toss in our reserved pork sauce and simmer it until it's reduced to basically nothing. This is really going to concentrate the flavor and give us that nice Chinese barbecue pork flavor, but with the more common and much easier to prepare ground pork. 
This should only take a couple minutes. When the pork is done, you always want to make sure you drain it on paper towels. Because we'll be deep frying our egg rolls, they have a tendency to become kind of greasy, so you want to remove as much of the fat from the pork as possible, and then set it aside. The final thing we'll need to prepare is the spice mixture. And this is the one thing that will set your homemade egg rolls apart from the bland brought in egg rolls you'll find at most takeout restaurants. Properly seasoning the vegetables before stuffing your egg rolls is a total game changer. The reason why so many modern versions are lacking in flavor is that they skip this step. And the secret ingredient the restaurants with the best egg rolls use is chicken bouillon powder. I know this may sound strange, but bouillon powder is often added to dishes at takeout restaurants to give them an extra boost of umami. The most common one I've seen being used is likum ki. You'll typically find two different versions, the green premium without MSG and the red one with MSG. And you already know what I'm going to say, the red one is better. But either works fine. To make the spice blend, let's add 2 teaspoons of kosher salt to a bowl, 2.5 teaspoons of chicken bouillon powder, 1.5 teaspoons of granulated sugar, and this is not going to make our egg roll sweet, but a bit of sugar rounds out the saltiness in the dish. It's something a lot of home cooks miss, but is essential in getting the proper takeout flavor. Then add an eighth of a teaspoon of Chinese five spice, an eighth of a teaspoon of white pepper, and an eighth of a teaspoon of black pepper. Then give it a good mix and set your spice blend aside. To fry the egg rolls, let's start by heating some neutral oil to 350 degrees. I'm using my deep fryer because it makes life easier, but you can also use a big pot, like my Dutch oven here. You just want to make sure to use a thermometer to maintain the temperature and use enough oil to completely cover the egg rolls. When you're ready to start rolling, let's take our vegetables and add a quarter cup of thinly sliced green onions, one and a half teaspoons of toasted sesame oil, all of the reserved pork, and our spice mixture. Then give the vegetables a good toss to ensure everything is evenly coated. And you want to do this as close to frying the egg rolls as possible because the salt in the spice mixture can draw out some moisture from the vegetables. For the rolling station, here I've got the vegetables, one beaten egg, and eight egg roll skins. To get started, notice there are two sides to the egg roll wrappers, one side with flour and another plain side. The flour side is the outside of the egg roll, so always lay it flour side down when you're making them. And you'll want to lay the wrapper with one of the pointed ends facing directly toward you, like a diamond. This makes it much easier to roll up. Then grab about half a cup of the vegetable mixture and place it almost halfway up the egg roll skin, but slightly closer to you. Then bring the pointed end closest to you over the top of the vegetables and using your finger, push it under the vegetables like this. Roll it forward slightly and when you're able to, push down on both sides of the vegetable mixture. Then take each side and bring the flaps into the middle of the egg roll like this, tucking in any part that overlaps. When you have about one and a half to two inches left at the top, wipe down the wrapper with the beaten egg. This is gonna seal the egg roll and keep it shut. Then continue rolling forward, slightly pressing down until it's totally sealed. Now, a lot of people think you can freeze the egg rolls at this point, but I highly recommend against doing this because the skins have a tendency to dry out and crack if you freeze them before cooking. So when your oil is up to temp, drop the egg rolls and set a timer for seven minutes. And you'll wanna try to turn the egg rolls about every 30 to 60 seconds. There's always gonna be one side that floats to the top, so just do your best. The color evens out more after it's been taken out of the oil. And you want to resist the urge to totally submerge the egg rolls with the basket because it's the little bubbles at the top of the oil that make the nice blisters on the egg roll skins. After your time is up, you'll want to drain them of oil as much as you can. My next door neighbors growing up owned a Chinese restaurant and the way I was taught to do it was to set them facing up in a pot lined with paper towels. This apparently ensures the oil doesn't pool inside of the egg rolls or you can just toss them on a wire rack. At this point, you have several different options. You can eat them right now, they are technically done. You can let them cool down completely and freeze them if you make a big batch. And you can drop them in the fryer and reheat straight from the freezer. Or you can use the ancient Chinese takeout trick of double frying them if you want the extra crispy, super crunchy style egg roll. All you'll do is pump up the temperature to 375 degrees and fry them again for an additional two minutes. And this method is going to give you that earth shattering crust that is the mark of a well-made egg roll. And before we try them, no true egg roll aficionado would dip them in anything less than a proper duck and or mustard sauce. For the duck sauce, I know this may come as a shock to many, but it's not actually made of duck. It gets its name because it's addictive as quack. Takeout places will give you your first packet for free. Next thing you know, you're hooked on the stuff. That's how they get you. And they make all the money on the comeback. But to make it at home, let's start with two tablespoons of water, one tablespoon of sugar, and a quarter teaspoon of kosher salt. Give it a stir until the sugar and salt are dissolved and add a quarter cup of apricot preserves, 
a quarter teaspoon of light soy sauce, half a teaspoon of unseasoned rice vinegar, and one teaspoon of applesauce. Then give everything a good stir until it's well combined, and if it looks a little thin, don't worry, because after it sits in the fridge for a bit, the pectin will firm it up. Now, Chinese hot mustard sauce at its most basic is just equal parts hot mustard powder and cold water stirred together. And you'll want to let it sit for at least 30 minutes to an hour to really get that nasal passage clearing heat. The longer it sits, the hotter it gets. Always remember that. But you can make hot mustard sauce a little better if you add a pinch of white pepper, a splash of toasted sesame oil, and a splash of unseasoned rice vinegar. Give everything a good stir, and this will make you a mustard sauce that is better than you can find in any takeout packet. Now, let's give our egg rolls a try and see how we did. This is how I remember egg rolls tasting when I was a kid, and they were all made by hand at family-owned businesses. If you make these properly, with a little care and attention to detail, they are a true delicacy. And I wanted to say something clever here, but these egg rolls are no joke. So if you want to learn how to make Chinese takeout style General Tso's chicken at home, be sure to check out this video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.